Hey, it's Mike here, and today, blueberries. Is it worth it to spend that extra money and get those fresh blueberries for the most antioxidants and health benefits? Or is it okay to just go with those cheaper frozen blueberries, which I have personally been buying, so I care a lot about this question. So we're gonna look at a ton of research on that, as well as the research on dried blueberries, what's happening with those, as well as a very recent 2025 study on dried blueberry protein bars and the antioxidant quality of those. Also gonna talk about general antioxidant dynamic things, like bioavailability and a little bit about absorption and how those antioxidants change. And also a quick new angle on that whole, hey, don't eat smoothies with bananas and blueberries because the bananas just destroy the blueberry antioxidants. Study, we'll cover that. You may have noticed that I am filming outside, which is probably a bad idea because the sun is dramatically quickly shifting to make me very spotty and splotchy. So I probably need to move. <laughs> Start by saying that a lot of my life revolves around blueberries. Every single morning, I'm getting those frozen blueberries, generally adding them to my oatmeal, sometimes cereal if I'm really lazy or running late. So I'm like, if I'm losing out because I'm eating frozen blueberries, I'm going to be mad. I need to finally look at this. But if I'm missing out from those frozen blueberries, I would be very blue, like berry white. In that case, you could say that I blew it. <laughs> okay, now we got to just stop. And then also I am doing wild blueberries, which have about twice the antioxidant content. And in terms of those wild blueberries, they just have higher antioxidants because they have a higher ratio of skin, which is more dense with antioxidants to flesh. It's kind of crazy that Vegans like to use words like flesh for plants. Clearly they're missing eating dead animals. Unfortunately, studies aren't generally on wild blueberries, but I think the general blueberry data applies to those wild blueberries. You already know that blueberries are incredibly healthy. Do I need to convince you of that? No, but there is new research, which I think is really cool. Lightning fast, we can cover three or four points here. So this is like a blueberry news segment. And the very first piece of news is a recent study. The only one on wild blueberries, ironically, had males first do cardio, then two weeks of eating wild blueberries, then cardio again. And they found that they burned more fat after that wild blueberry period. We also have a study on middle-aged people that found that blueberries made them smarter and made their memory better. Yes, metrics of language use and memory both improved, which is awesome. Awesome. And finally, I want to say I don't really like rat studies, but one did find that the arsenic induced brain toxicity was reduced <laughs> with blueberries. So take that as you will. All right, now lightning fast, we have to break down the cost comparison here because that's really going to answer the question of whether it is worth it or not worth it. And we can just ask the internet and get a general answer of, yeah, those frozen blueberries are oftentimes between two and a half and four dollars per pound. Well, the fresh ones are about four to eight dollars a pound. We can also look to Walmart to sort of gauge this to put our ear to the ground and we can see that, yeah, a fresh pint is about three dollars, 18 ounces, which is a bit more than a pound is closer to five dollars, which makes a pound about four twenty five. However, these are pretty heavily on sale. It would be about six dollars normally allegedly i don't know if you can believe these sale numbers nowadays but then in terms of frozen we're talking about three dollars for a pound bag or seven dollars and 82 cents for a three pound bag which brings us down to two dollars and 60 cents per pound so yeah we can see that frozen blueberries are between 30 and 50 percent cheaper depending on the amount that you get and then of course being able to buy a larger bag of frozen blueberries is going to lead to a lot less blueberries going bad anyway you get the point but i know you guys just want me to immediately get to the actual topic at hand here which is the frozen blueberry studies. Let's hop right into them. We have an interesting sort of honors paper here, which was published in the Journal of Agricultural and Food Sciences, in which they, of course, just tested that fresh versus frozen blueberries. And I will say they sort of sporadically tested them after they were in the freezer for various periods of time. And this is what sort of blew my mind. They say, quote, Overall, the anthocyanin concentration increased over time. Every concentration from the frozen berries was higher than that for the fresh, except for the samples taken at 34 and 66 days. And the explanation for this is pretty fascinating. Essentially what happened is that those fresh ones were pretty good, started going down a little bit, but then when you hit the two month mark or so, you start to get freezer burn. Just a little bit of that, you get these ice crystals, which can break open some of the cell structure and make those anthocyanins more available. And in this case, it was a study where they were making extracts, essentially blueberry juice. And so that was better for what they were trying to study. And they were looking at the antioxidant capacity, free radical scavenging capacity of that extract. And I will say those fresh blueberries were still imported from Argentina. So we got to look further into the data here and see what we can find. But it is worth noting that that actual sort of busted open freezer burn situation for those cells is 
pretty practical for actual humans eating this stuff. All right, now we get on to what is probably the best study we have here. We're talking about one that looked not just at the free radical scavenging capacity, but they also looked at the actual antioxidant content. So they dried it out and measured the antioxidants per dried grams of blueberry. So they started off with fresh blueberries and then they refrigerated those for two weeks. So that's another comparison, obviously not freezing. And they found a drop by about 20% in that antioxidant content. And we'll talk more about dried in a second, but yeah, the dried blueberries lost about half of their antioxidants. So yeah, not looking good for that. And yeah, in case you're wondering, all the blueberries that they looked at were originally from the same batch of blueberries. They even doubled them up and did double samples of things to be sure that something wasn't messed up. And so for our frozen blueberries, they looked at one month out and three months out and the frozen antioxidant content actually trended slightly higher, but the official conclusion of the study is that there was no statistically significant difference between the two. And in particular, they looked at cyanidin-3 rutinicide, which is a major antioxidant in those blueberries. So freezing is looking pretty good. And then we also have a nice chart here looking at that free radical scavenging potential. And again, that's what does oxidative stress, causes damage in your arteries, everywhere else, aging. And while the one month frozen did the best, it was followed by those refrigerated fresh ones, despite them having that 20% lower antioxidant content. So we're getting some interesting variability there, but the study still says no statistical significance between those in terms of a difference. So things are still looking really good for frozen, better than I ever thought they would. But then what if you're, what if you're really lazy and you just forget your blueberries in your freezer for like 10 months? Are you, are you gonna just throw them away? Are they not good anymore? Well, the study looked at a few different berries for that long. They looked at blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries. And this is where blueberries seem to be performing even the best among berries because over 10 months, they lost only about 10% of their total anthocyanin content and also about 20% of their antioxidant activity, which was better than the nearly 40% lost in the raspberries. And they interestingly also looked at vitamin C losses over that period of time and the graph starts at two months in which there's virtually no loss, but then out to 10 months, we're talking about a 20% loss. So still very small. And this is where I'm gonna hop into a quick tangent for a second, because you might remember I did a video responding to all of those news articles saying that, hey, if you mix blueberries with bananas in your smoothie, you are gonna be throwing away all those antioxidants. And that's because bananas have polyphenol oxidase, which oxidizes, really destroys those polyphenols. And even though the study was on chocolate polyphenols, they said, yes, this also would apply to blueberries theoretically. And in that video, I hinted that there might be some ways around that. I even mentioned that an active ingredient in cinnamon, which I love to put in my smoothies, inhibits that polyphenol oxidase, so inhibits the inhibitor. But then we also have, from this study, an over 90% inhibition of polyphenol oxidase with ascorbic acid, which is just vitamin C. And so this is why I'm a little bit frustrated about that initial study and the news headlines about smoothies because we have blueberries themselves containing vitamin C. We might need to add a little bit more to get the full effect, who knows? I would love to see a study with various smoothies, even with some added oranges as an option and see what we're getting in terms of the polyphenol oxidase destruction of our lovely blueberry antioxidants. But again, this is why it's super important to actually study the foods that we're gonna make conclusions about because I know people are probably out there afraid to add bananas to their smoothie because of this, which I think is probably not a practical angle. Anyway, let's move on to drying here. And I will just say, again, we had that 50% reduction. We also have this study, which found that freeze drying, which is really freezing under a vacuum, in a vacuum chamber, that was also bad at over a 50% reduction in antioxidants, ouch. But then get this, if you do convection drying, which is just like some hot air over it for a longer period of time, you get less than a 10% loss in that antioxidant content. Now we can get to the 2025 study that looked at dried blueberries in protein bars and checked their antioxidant content in a roundabout way. This was a blinded, placebo-controlled four-way crossover trial <laughs> that was essentially on two different types of blueberries, which we'll talk about in a second, as well as a placebo and that dried blueberry protein bar. And they looked at the metabolites that came out of people that ate these in a random order. Well-designed study, mostly. But they found that the difference for those dried blueberry bars was really negligible in terms of how many antioxidants were being absorbed. And we can see that from various charts that they have here on metabolites, which we'll get into in a second, showing that that blue dotted line, which was the bars, did pretty well. However, we have 
two different types of blueberries here. And to my surprise from these charts, looking to the serum concentration of these metabolites, the blood levels, we see a pretty dang good spike even out to like nine hours. However, that spike is usually highest in a particular strain of blueberries. They had two different strains. And I'm a little bit frustrated because clearly they had a better one and a crappier one and they put the better one in the bar and in most cases it didn't do quite as well as the fresh version of that blueberry. There was one situation where that metabolite was higher in the bar but virtually all of them aren't as high but putting that crappier blueberry in there sort of made it so they could say that the dried blueberry bar wasn't really that different but yeah it still hung in there you were still getting a lot of those blueberry benefits and that brings me to the question of what's going on with these metabolites why aren't we just looking at that main anti antioxidant level and that is that really only between one and five percent of intact antioxidants from blueberries get absorbed which at first makes it sound like we're not getting any of the benefits and yeah our gut bacteria might get some benefits from it but it is the case that a lot of those metabolites are still antioxidants that it breaks down into some of them are even more powerful from various studies than the original antioxidants so we're getting increased antioxidant capacity of our blood still, even though we're not seeing the same intact ones. So let's not get lost on that. So I will just say I am pleasantly surprised that me being a little bit on the cheaper side and buying those frozen blueberries uh, has not really cost me a lot in terms of antioxidant losses, potentially even leading to some antioxidant gains and definitely leading to some wallet-based gains. It's also a major convenience thing. I'm not constantly worried about how many of the blueberries in there have gotten all squishy and making sure I'm not wasting a bunch. Like every frozen blueberry that I'm buying, I'm eating, except for the one time when I accidentally just dropped, never do this, I spilled my three pound bag of blueberries all over the floor and they created little frozen trails of blueberry juice that was a nightmare and i will say yes there are probably some other benefits from fresh blueberries out there maybe in terms of the microbiome and what fresh bacteria could be in there or whatever but we don't have studies on that or at least we didn't get to cover some of those so you know maybe there are some advantages but in terms of these main antioxidants that are really powerful we're still getting that benefit and yeah let me know down below if there are any other ways that you're concerned about blueberries and antioxidants probably didn't cover everything here but i'm personally happy about this news so yeah feel free to like subscribe all that good stuff and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching